All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to walk you through all the different settings that are involved with the main Battle.net launcher. I've talked about doing things like installing games and all of that good stuff, but what are all of the settings that appear when you click on the Battle.net menu? The first one, obviously, is the settings. This opens up the big long list of settings, which I will go through in a moment. The next one is making sure that this launcher is up to date. Clicking on Battle.net updates will tell you what the latest update patches have changed when you went to update your launcher. And if you need to update your launcher, there'll be a little green like up arrow here. that will tell you you have an update waiting and you can go ahead and relaunch this. It only takes a moment. Then down here, you've got things like these buttons here all take you to the Battle.net website where you can check on your account information. You can get support if you're having some technical issues. You can converse on the forums, or it'll help you go download the appropriate version of the mobile app based upon what phone you like to use. Down here at the bottom, we've got send feedback where you can give your opinion about how things run and if you have any ideas or suggestions. If you encounter a bug or something breaks, you can report that under report a bug. Or if you're confused and you forget what things do what, you can take a tour. It also allows you to log out of your account and log into another one, or just close the application altogether by hitting exit, and there's some social media buttons of the appropriate platforms at the bottom. I guess they're only on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. And then we're gonna go ahead and look at what all of these options are here in settings. So the first tab here is the app settings. These are things like your language, on game launch, keep Battle.net open, or do you want it to close in the background or minimize? Uh, when clicking X to close the program, do you want it to close it all the way or just minimize it to the system tray? Currently, I just have it on the default where when I close this program, it just hides running in the background in the system tray in case I, at the spur of the moment, want to play a game, which is the reason why they want you to have it open all the time. What if you want to play a game? We want to be ripped and ready when you are. You can also change the startup behaviors by saying you want to launch Battle.net when I start my computer and launch it, minimize to the system tray, and remember my login details and phone numbers and keep me logged in. Um, if you don't want those settings or if you don't want it to keep your login information, you can click this button to clear any saved login information. That's really helpful if you go log in at your friend's house, but you don't necessarily trust that all of his kids won't try to log in and mess with your account when you're not looking. You can also on startup view home page or last viewed game page. And then you've got some advanced features like use browser hardware acceleration. Always a good idea and allow multiple instances of Battle.net. I've not really run into a reason why you'd need that, but it's there if you want it. Download settings changes the default download and installation behaviors of your games. This is the default location you want it to be saved and install the games at. It's just my program files. You can scan for games that were already on your computer. Like for example, if you had to reinstall the launcher, but you didn't want to reinstall all your games, you can scan for and rehook them up to the launcher. You can have this automatically scan Battle.net games in the background every time that you launch the program. You can have it automatically create a shortcut on the desktop during game installation. You can have it do this for all users on the machine or just for the admin that's installing stuff. You can have it pause updates when you launch a game so it doesn't lag you when you play. You can have it notify you when games automatically begin updating. And then when you want your automatic updates to take place. And then down here, if you find yourself downloading stuff a lot while you are also working on the computer and on the web, and you don't want it to lag you out, you can put some limits on how fast things can download down here so that it doesn't cause problems and bottlenecking on your network. Game settings is sort of a buy the game thing that tells you where it's installed, what language it's installed with, and you can make some basic changing changes from the modify install button or reset the in-game options to default. You can change how your friends list and your chat works. This is mostly for notifications. You can hide friends real ID information 
You can hide offline friends if they've been offline for more than 30 days. You can decide what kind of alerts and flashing you want based on different behaviors from people trying to contact you. I've left these on as default because not many people contact me through Battle.net. So if they do, I assume it's either an emergency or somebody's been hacked and is trying to scam me. That's just sort of what I'm used to. Um, you can also change your voice chat settings. So if you find yourself using voice chat a lot, it's a good idea to select what your proper output device is and what your proper input device is. So it's using the correct devices. This is especially important if you have a bunch of different peripherals installed and plugged into your computer that all have speakers. You don't want to start trying to talk to your friend and have it coming out of the speakers, you know, in the bedroom or upstairs if you've got like a Wi-Fi surround sound going on. Similarly, you can click on test microphone to hear yourself. You can have transmission mode be open mic or push to talk. I personally like push to talk, so I'll be selecting that. And then down here under notifications, you can just change the global notification settings when Battle.net's gonna do stuff. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go through them. This includes things like friends list notifications, chat notifications, voice chat, and when people at mention you, that's mostly important for group chats. Beta behaviors, you can switch to the beta version of the launcher and test it if you want by clicking switch to beta. And then some third party legal about information if you decide you need it. For whatever reason, all of the licensing and legal jargon is here on the last page. And that for the most part is most of the different settings for the launcher itself. You've got some other buttons here, like this one here, it says what's new for the launcher. This is your notifications. If a game has been updated, if someone's added you as a friend, if someone sent a friend request, all that stuff will show up here. Um, and beyond that, that should be the vast majority of it. You can also add a favorite game by going here and clicking the plus symbol, which will add one of these games. If I click on it to the different game logos at the top of my screen, which allow me to click between the different games to play them. Um, and yeah, that'll be basically it for this one. This has been a walkthrough of the launcher specific settings and what all of them do. I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody and have a good one.